In this video, we are going to be looking at metadata alternatives. And this is going to vary by database engine. So as we discussed with the information schema dot columns, we have to remember, or I'm sorry, information schema, we have to remember that not all of the relational databases have those. So every relational database will generally have their own meta information ways of getting access to information. So you'll want to become familiar with where that will exist depending on which SQL backend you are going to use. So in this demo, we're going to be using Microsoft SQL Server, but keep in mind, this applies only to Microsoft SQL Server. You'll want to find this information whether you're using MySQL, Oracle, or wherever. So in this video, what we're going to be looking at just as a demonstration is we're going to actually be looking at where we're going to get the stored procedure text, in this case, just one. And we're going to be joining this, the text here come from sys comments. And again, this is something that's available in SQL Server. And we're going to be joining that with sys objects. And we're going to be joining that on the ID of this uh, sys comments to the object ID in sys objects. And so this will allow us to see the text. We'll see the type, of course, which we're going to be filtering in only SQL stored procedures. If we didn't, as we'll see in a second, uh, other things have come back. And then this will tell us the name. Okay. And so. Again, if we were using a different database backend, we would be changing this accordingly where we could get this information. But as you see, this is where we can actually have some alternatives to the information schema, right? We could look at information schema for some information, or we could also look at the custom metadata, for instance, provided by SQL Server to get this type of information. So as we see, for instance, in our example here, we have the name of the stored procedure, we have the type, which is a SQL stored procedure, and then we have the text, and we can actually uh, look at the text. Keep in mind, if we were, like, let's say, trying to search for text in stored procedures, this is one of the alternatives to doing that. We could also be uh, developing an application that iterates over all of our source control code and look through it that way. That's an alternative as well. Okay, so for instance, when we look at these these objects here individually, we look and we see what's provided here. And uh, this right here is a constraint. For those of you who are wondering what this is, this is just a default constraint. And we see the object ID and we see some information related to that. We see the text of that. In this case, it's getting the date. And the same thing if we look at sys objects, we're selecting uh, top one star from here. Uh, we see the name, we see the object ID, the principal ID, etc., and quite a bit of information on this. You'll also see this is MS Shift 1. This means it comes with SQL Server, right? That means it's not something that we created. You'll notice, by the way, here I filtered that out. I only want objects that I've created in this query, right? And so that's just understanding this custom meta information. Now, like I said, every SQL database will have this stored differently. So it's just understanding what those columns are. And you'll see this is why I go through this, because we can look at the create date, we can look at the modify date. Uh, in fact, this actually kind of expands more in some cases than what we can get from information schema. So if you think about it, there might be more detailed information. A lot of times, I actually don't use information schema for a lot of the more meta information, where I typically use information schema is when I'm doing something more dynamic where I'm like taking a column name or taking a combination of column names from a table, etc. In fact, some of the demos we looked at, uh, yes, as, as somebody who's done DBA work, that's usually where I'll use information schema. However, if I want more detailed information about things, like for instance, looking at modified dates of objects or troubleshooting a lot of things, more than likely I'm going to be using the custom meta information objects. Those are what I'm going to look at first. So again, that varies by the SQL backend, but as you become more familiar with that, you will be able to troubleshoot a lot more, especially if, you, especially if you're working on more of the administration side. It is true you can use some of that for development, uh, but keep in mind, in a lot of cases, especially good DBAs, are going to restrict those objects for developers. And there's a reason why that is, is because, again, if you give developers access to that, and you have some user account that has access to that throughout all of your environments, that means if a hacker were to compromise that user, they would have access to that information. And as I said in a previous video, hackers are generally after information about your environment. So once you become familiar with these objects, you'll be able to get a lot of information about the metadata. If you are in a SQL backend where you can use information schema, those previous videos that we, where we went over, you'll see that there is some limited information that you can grab from them. And in some cases, those will actually suffice for what you need to do.